In China, I guess they don't have to worry so much about ballots. You have to worry about getting sent to a concentration camp. Or if you're in Hong Kong or Taiwan, you have to worry that perhaps the mainland Communist Chinese Party is going to simply try to take over your home and tell you what you can do. Uh, So with that kind of history, does China have any business being on the U.N.'s Human Rights Council? I thought we'd talk about that with Dr. Lee Edwards, who's a historian, author, and a distinguished fellow at Heritage. Dr. Edwards, Edwards, welcome back to the program. Thank you so much, Lars. Always good to be with you. I don't think much of the U.N. I have a bias against the organization. I think it's kind of a toothless tiger at the most important points. It doesn't really live up to the promise of an international body uh, capable of, of actually doing things that are significant. But it becomes even more of a joke when they put uh, an entity like uh, China onto the Human mm-hmm. Rights Council, suggesting that a country that has a million Uyghurs locked up in, in concentration camps should be telling the rest of the world uh, what's, what's, what's moral and what's not when it comes to human rights. Am I, am I off base there, Doc? Well, you know, this is a travesty. It's like taking the, a firehouse and turning it over to a gang of arsonists. Uh, it's ridiculous that China, which is one of the worst offenders of human rights, as you've mentioned, the one million Uyghurs estimated in camps, and they're being brainwashed night and day. The dissidents are routinely arrested and jailed, put in uh, all kinds of situations without a trial. One one gentleman died when they returned his body home. The chains were still on his legs. I mean, this is what's going on. So it's a travesty. And there's something that can be done about it, you know, Lars, and that is that Coming up in 2022 is the uh, Winter Olympics, and this could be a point of pressure. If we wanted to really make an issue out of it, uh, we could do so. Uh, I'm not saying you want to go so far as perhaps a boycott, but you could certainly say, should we have the Winter Olympics in such a primeval violator of human rights as China? I think that's that's a great way of sending a message. The other thing I wonder about is, Dr. Edwards, most people who are part of any kind of institution uh, are concerned about the way that institution presents itself to the world. I tell my producers that I want my program to present a good face to the world. I want us to be honest. If we make a mistake, we go back and quickly correct it. What is the U.N. saying when it allows China to do this? And my suspicion is the reason China wants to be on the Human Rights Council is it can effectively provide cover for its own bad activities by Mm. being on this council. Uh, Am I right in that assumption? Absolutely, Lars. Sorry, go ahead, Doc. I mean, they really can react to international pressure or else they wouldn't be doing what they're doing there at the United Nations and also in in investing as much as they are in China, uh, nearest neighbors in Asia and also in Africa, Latin America, and what have you. They do care what people say about them. They're very, very sensitive, uh, believe it or not, even though they've been around for 5,000 years. <laughs> so well, we can put pressure on them with the right. And I think, as a matter of fact, all we have to do is to tell the president about this, and uh, they'd know something was happening. They, they, he would speak up. We can be sure of that. Well, Dr. Erdridge, doesn't the U.N. care about the, 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 I guess, the scenario where they put China on the Human Rights Council? They must have some sense that this makes the whole operation look like a joke, which doesn't look good for the U.N. So why are they doing it? Well, uh, well I think you can do again. It's a question of whether or not we want to bring these things up and make an issue about it also. And, of course, Another thing to be talking about is not only China, but Cuba has just been uh, reelected uh, to the Human Rights Council. Poor Cuba, which has been waiting 60 years for the free elections that Fidel promised them 60 years ago, uh, and on and on and on with the dissidents, the women in white, who every Sunday march up and down the streets of Havana uh, in recognition of the fact that their husbands and their sons and and cousins are in jail uh, over and over again. So if we, if we link together China and Cuba, it seems that we have a one-two punch here, and all we have to do is to begin to make a, a fuss about it, and I think there can be some reaction. 
Yeah, and, and, and I got to tell you, I, I think back to when Barack Obama was president and he decided to get more cozy with the Cubans. I mean, it wasn't full diplomatic, or it was very nearly full diplomatic relations that we were sending right. a message under that president that we're okay with Cuba's behavior. Uh, fortunately, uh, I think we've reversed some of that, but it certainly sent the wrong message to the rest of the world saying we could we could sign off on that kind of thing, didn't it? Well, of course. I mean, Fidel and his people, uh, successors, thought they could get away with almost anything. And as a matter of fact, the number of dissidents who were jailed following Obama's visit to them, his friendship visit, went up, didn't go down. So here again, you know, if we want to really speak out, as I think we should, I think most decent people want for such such horrible violations. I mean, they've set up now a situation where they have 10, they divide up a particular town or city or county into households, 10 households, which they would called upon to spy on 10 other households. Oh, They're trying to make China into a nation of informers. You know, it's just, it's worse than a travesty. It's a, it's a tragedy. No, it sounds uh, a lot I, like 1984. Dr. Lee Edwards from the Heritage Foundation. Dr. Edwards, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. 